Wait. I say. On the Lord. Fret not yourself. Because of evil doers. Don't you ever be envious against those who work iniquity. They shall soon be cut off like grass and wither like the green earth. talk this morning and this day from this idea outfitting for the battle outfitting choosing the right wardrobe for the battle we are not engaged in a skirmish and this battle this warfare is not for the faint of heart the timid and the squeamish need not enlist because it's dangerous it's hard fought it gives no quarter it yields no territory is win or lose it's winner take all you are either in the fight or you're on the sidelines my brother and I went a year or so ago to Hawaii to visit with my brother who had had a stroke and eventually died from the complications. And before we left, he's a technology freak. He, he, he cannot be separated from his iPhone. He's always texting and uh, what you call it, tweeting. Uh, he's instant messaging, uh, Facebooking. He, he's, 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 he's overboard with technology. And I can't program a VCR. I don't, I don't know how to get my messages off the computer. I have, to, I have to get Hazel or Reverend Washington to get my emails. You, you know you're the man when you can pay somebody to do that. Uh, but my brother is wild about that kind of stuff. And so he, he, he checked on the weather conditions, what the weather would be like while we were there. And uh, his checking on the, the, the temperature in Hawaii at the time determined what we packed for the trip. You don't go to Honolulu with a mink coat with long sleeves because it's inappropriate for the condition. You, you don't go to a wedding with short pants. You don't come to church with an after five evening gown. You don't go to a barbecue with a suit on because it's inappropriate outfitting. We Christians need to know what to wear to the war. Because it's not a skirmish, it's not a scrimmage, it's not uh, a little hand-to-hand -hand combat. 
It's a winner take all. No holes barred. Prisoner against prisoner. Fight to the death. And you can't fight till you get tired. You got to fight till you win. I wish I had a witness here. The race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. But the scripture says to whomever can endure, can hold out to the end. Now there are some things you've got to know before you get in the battle. That faith, Satan will use any tool at his disposal, fair or unfair, to trip you up. I wish I had a believer here. Uh, because everything visible and physical has an invisible and spiritual antecedent. Everything that happens in the physical world has a spiritual cause. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Uh, our real battle is not with a cult. Not with a false religion. Not with atheists or agnostics or pseudo-Christians but with the demonic beings working through them of which flesh and blood opponents themselves are unaware of how serious the battle really is. Satan does not intend to wound you. Satan intends to kill you. I wish I had a witness here. And so you got to know some things before you get into battle. Uh, you, you might have seen uh, Sean Connery and Kevin Costner uh, in the movie The Untouchables. Uh, Sean Connery was a, was a policeman in that movie. He won an Academy Award, an Oscar in that movie, The Untouchables. Uh, for this line, and I believe this line is what won for him the Academy Award. He says, uh, we are fighting against an enemy. He said, uh, if they bring a knife, you bring a gun. If they send one of yours to the hospital, send one of theirs to the morgue. Uh, because it's winner, take all. And that's the kind of attitude you've got to have when you fight with the devil because he's not playing with you. Uh, Satan means to destroy you because you represent what he will never become and that is what he used to be. He used to be a child of God. Have I got a witness here? But now that you are a child of God, you represent everything that he's not and he is hell bent on destroying you completely. And so if we're going to do battle with him, uh, we've got to recognize, brothers and sisters, that Satan has power, but not authority. Uh, I need two or three more witnesses here. He does have power, but he does not have authority. Because power is the ability to get things done. But authority is the ability to get things done whenever you feel like it. And Satan has power to get at us if we get out from under authority. Let me run that by you one more time. The only way Satan can defeat you is he's got to lure you from under God's authority. Because as long as you are under God's authority, he has power to get at you, but not authority to destroy you. 
You don't have to take my word for that. Uh, I need two or three Bible readers here who remembers the story of Job. Uh, Job was a perfect and an upright man. Am I right about that? Uh, and the Bible says he sacrificed every day. Uh, he sacrificed for his children even when they were outside his presence. And Satan presented himself with the sons of God. And God said, Satan, what are you doing here? He said, I've been going to and fro looking for somebody to, to tear up, to, to devour. God said, have you considered my servant Job? Satan said, I thought about it. I had him on my list. But you got a fence around it. You have hedged him in under your authority. I wish I had somebody to help me. If you let me get to him, I'll make him curse you to your face. God said you can get at his body, but you can't touch his soul. Because there's something God will let Satan do so far. But when Satan goes too far against somebody who belongs to the Lord, God says, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. You can't touch this. No, 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 no. He belongs to me. I will let you try him and tempt him. I'm going to let you manipulate him and stimulate him and motivate him and activate him, but I won't let you destroy him. There ought to be somebody in here this morning who's been tempted and tried, buffeted and pushed, shoved and knocked down, but you're still standing because I belong. If anybody asks you who I am, I wish I had a witness here. Talk about me as much as you please. The more you talk, I'm going to stay on my knees. Criticize me if you will. I got power that you don't know nothing about. Uh, finally, my brother, be strong. Not in your education. Not in your 401k. Not in your beauty and your good looks. But be strong in the Lord. You, 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 you see, the only way God can protect you is if you stay in the precincts, in the environment where God promised to meet you. You, you can't get strength hanging with folk who don't love God. You, you can't get strength hanging around the club or, 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 or speak easy or, or hanging around with folk who don't have no spiritual conversation. You can't get strong hanging with people talking crazy all the time and joking and lewd and lascivious conversation. Get with some people who talk spiritual talk. Get with some folk who know how to pray. Young women, you need to be with some older woman who's got some godly experience. You need some Christian woman who's not embarrassed to testify that she made some mistakes. And if you listen to her, she can keep you from doing the same thing she did. Old oh man, grab some young man and show him that there's a way that seems right. Have I got a witness here? Be strong in the Lord. Too, too many people who go to church are not strong in the Lord. 
you, 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 you're too ego-centered. You, 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 get, you get upset too easily. The least little thing hurts your feeling. No, you got to, you got to get some backbone. You, you got to get some strength to fight another day. Because the fight you had today, if that wears you out, you're not going to have strength to fight tomorrow. L listen, uh, 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 the prophet says, if you have run with the footmen and they've wearied you, how shall you contend with horses? If you can't make it in the land where peace and prosperity abide, what are you going to do at the swelling of the Jordan? Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And when you get strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, then you can stand against the wiles, the schemes, the craftiness of the devil. Get that picture out of your mind of the devil with a pitchfork and a red suit and long horns. The devil comes to church. He's in positions of authority. He gets in folk you least think he's in. Have I got a witness here? Sometimes the folk closest to you don't mean you're no good. Sometimes Satan gets in members of your own family. I wish I had somebody to help me. That's why you got to be strong in the Lord because there are some folk you can't trust. I will lift up my eyes. I wish they had a Bible reader. Unto the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. I wish they had a witness. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. He that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is the shade upon your right hand. The sun shall not smite you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. He shall preserve your going out. You're coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. The Lord is my light. I wish I had my 730 cry. And my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh. Just before they got to me, they stumbled and they fell. Though a host should encamp against me, in this will I be confident. One thing, I need a witness here. Have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. 
fret not yourself because of evil doers. Don't you ever be envious against those who work iniquity. They shall soon be cut off like grass and wither like the green earth. So if you're going to do battle, you got to know how to dress. And I want, I want to talk about that for, for the rest of this day and two or three more Sundays after that. Uh, I want to talk about the outfit, the wardrobe that the Christian believer ought to have in his or her spiritual arsenal if you're going to do spiritual warfare. Uh, there used to be a time when you could tell where people were going by how they were dressed. But now you can't tell if a boy is a boy or, or a girl because clothing is unisex now. Men wear women's clothing and, and, and uh, in, in, in San Francisco, uh, they're trying to pass a law that you can just eat at a restaurant in the nude. You don't have to wear no clothes. That's how crazy they are on the West Coast. Uh, but, but we Christians got to put some stuff on. Well, before I get to that, first we got to take some stuff off. You got to crucify arrogance. You got to crucify your lust for power and prestige. You got to put your ambition on the side. You've got to get rid of your attitudes about who you think you are. Because God is not impressed with where you went to school. God is not impressed with how much money you have in your account. We are saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. And so the first piece of clothing we ought to have on is a girdle, a belt of truth. Gird your loins with a, with, with, a, with a belt, a girdle of truth. That belt, that, that girdle, uh, uh, somebody will help me here. Uh, that, that girdle pull some things together. It holds some things in. Come, come on, talk back to me here. You don't, you, you, you don't look like you look when you first get up in the morning. You got to pull some stuff together. I wish I had somebody to talk to me. And if you're going to be God's child, you got to pull some stuff together. Because the devil can easily get at you if you don't have it all together. You, you have to put on a girdle, a belt of truth. You got to know what truth is before you put it on. 2,000 years ago, Pilate asked, what is truth? You gonna help me preach this, won't you? If, if you talk this morning to a psychologist or a psychiatrist, they will tell us that truth is what you feel it is. Truth, according to a psychologist or a psychiatrist, is what you feel it to be. Uh, to a certified public accountant, truth is what you need it to be. To a shady lawyer, truth is whatever you want it to be. Uh, 
but the real truth have I got a witness is Jesus Christ you want to know what truth is look in the pure eyes of Jesus Christ and in Christ he says I am the way the truth and the life Jesus is not a part of the truth Jesus is not some of the truth Jesus is not somebody you add to make it more true he is truth they, 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 the Roman soldier put that belt on that girdle on because it would pull things together and keep things in place These, these young boys uh, walking the street holding their pants because it's fashionable not to have a belt on. And they don't know how satanic and demonic that is because walking trying to keep it in place means you don't have it together. Because any man who got himself together don't have to follow some fad that comes from another man who just got out of prison. When you're a real man, you got it all together. You don't have to hold it up. It's already together. I wish I had time to talk about all of that, but that's not the sermon. The belt holds things together. And listen, a fish would never get caught if he didn't open his mouth. You would never get yourself in the stuff you get yourself in if you shut your mouth. A soft word turns away wrath. Thank you for tuning in to A Call to Joy. It is our prayer that the Word of God has brought joy, strength, and faith to your life. We would love to have you as our guest at Lily Grove Missionary Baptist Church, where we are exalting the Savior, equipping the saints, and evangelizing the sinner. For your convenience, we have a 7.30 a.m. and 11 a.m. worship service every Sunday morning and 7 p.m. on Tuesday nights. Lily Grove is located at 7034 Till Wester Street, Houston, Texas, 77021, or feel free to visit our website at www.lilygrove.org. Until next week, God has called us to a life of joy.